Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. We're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. We have an email here from Udari. Hey Ben and Nathan, I recently discovered your show and I appreciate how it's given me access to a space filled with all things LSAT and law school admissions. I've heard you guys talk about reasons why a person shouldn't go to law school, namely, if they don't want to be a lawyer or do lawyer work, but I was hoping you guys could discuss the soft benefits, if any, gained in law school. Soft benefits? What do you mean? If you go to an ABA accredited law school, then you're allowed to sit for the bar exam in all 50 states. Yeah, I, I would say the soft benefits include learning to think more critically, learn how to read a lot of arbitrary garbage, maybe learn how to study more because this is hard work. These are soft benefits. The question is, do you want to pay $150,000 to get them? Right. Like expensive finishing school. I mean, if you're ultra rich, you know, and you just graduated from USC and you now want to spend more money, law school is a great way to spend more money and get, you know, like, sure, you become a slightly better writer or a slightly more engaged citizen or whatever. Anyway, sure. I think Kadari has some different ideas about soft benefits. So, okay. Because those, <laughs> I don't think either one of us would, unless you're, you know, sitting on tens of millions of dollars, it's not worth it for those reasons. Yeah. But Hodari says, I graduated from UCLA undergrad last June with a degree in public affairs and plan on applying to JD MPP, Masters in Public Policy, joint degree programs this September. If I go through law school and decide not to practice law, I'm almost sure the degree will still help my career trajectory and next steps. Connections are king and the JD prestige matters, but I'm set on law school because I'd learn to interact with law and policy in a way I wouldn't with just a master's in public policy. You're going to learn some things, but I think you're going to learn a lot more once you start working. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay, how is Hadari so certain? Well, yep. Hadari has done some research. Okay. I've talked to lawyers, policy analysts, healthcare administrators, and people in government oversight trying to see how I can be competitive in getting jobs like the people I was interviewing. And for the most part, I've heard a JD helps. What do you think? I don't think I'm looking for a unicorn job. Spending months at a time surveying the legal landscape to discover solutions and write briefs sounds fun. But I also think I'd have a more meaningful life if I was involved with policy and law to do oversight slash public affairs work at a hospital or within the government positions that might not require a JD. As one lawyer put it, Michelle Obama needed the JD to work for Sidley and Austin, which then helped her get the job at the mayor's office, which then transitioned into a VP role at the University of Chicago Hospital. My point is... A JD has value even if you're not in a barred position. What's Sidley and Austin? It's a, it's a law firm that focuses uh, a lot, I think, on appellate litigation and specifically for Supreme Court litigation. So she practiced law at Sidley and Austin. She did. <laughs> yeah. So your Michelle Obama she example, she, yeah, she, that fails because she practiced law, then got benefits from her JD. Like, I, I'm just real suspicious. I'm real skeptical of, oh, you have it. I mean, I have a JD and never practiced law. Yeah. Does my JD impress anybody if I'm out there trying to get a job, but I never practiced law? It seems super confusing. I would imagine they would be like, why aren't you a lawyer? Why are you applying here? No. Yeah. The Obama example. Sure. The JD is acting as a proxy for some sort of... Um, status or credibility indicator, but it's in conjunction with the actual legal experience. It's it's like the JD just sort of makes sense because she has this legal experience. It's really the fact that she, I think she was a partner there. I, 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 I don't remember or know, but um, that is what's going to get her into the mayor's office. And from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hadari continues. Make sure I go to law school for free, you say. I have a 3.65 GPA, 
parentheses, dropped from 3.84 in my last quarter because my family and I were evacuated from our city for two months because of a hydrogen sulfide gas leak. But I'll try. Okay, so you have a 3.65. If I needed to, I think I would rather pay half tuition at a top 20 school instead of a free ride somewhere else because dot 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 connections. Much appreciated, Hadari. What do you think of this connections argument? I don't think it's worth it. I think you're paying for connections to your fellow students, essentially. You can get much more useful, I think, connections by hustling and getting jobs or even just informational interviews with actual attorneys. It's true that your colleagues aren't giving you aren't getting you a job anytime soon. Yeah. So that can't be it. Does the value of going to a top 20 school like UCLA or isn't USC also in the top 20? I think so. I think so, like 18 or something. <clears throat> yeah. Does it, is it really worth it for Hadari to go to UCLA, USC, pay half tuition? I mean, what, what's, because what's Hadari's next option going to be? It's not going to be that much lower. It's going to be Wash U or something that's ranked. Or what is Wash U? Wash U is in the top. Wash U is actually it? ranked 15th, so it's, it's yeah. actually better than USC. But. but some of these schools, right, they're going to be 25, 30, whatever. They're not significantly better, but are worse. <laughs> and yet they're free. Yeah, I, Hadari, I would just tell you don't make this decision right now. Instead, get the very best LSAT you can and apply early and broadly. Once you have offers in hand, then you can start making these decisions about what's a better school, you know, what's a better value. But don't, you're, you're thinking about it too much right now when you should be thinking about your LSAT. I, I just don't really buy this vague connections argument, right? Like everybody who you're talking to is saying, oh, well, Oh, a JD? Yeah, uh, yeah, a JD would help. Okay. Yeah, find someone who has the actual kind of job that you want to get, or at least close to it, and see what they say. Yeah, you know, and maybe put it to them like, okay, if I, get, if I pay half tuition at a top 20 school, I'm going to pay $30,000 a year. I'm going to graduate with six figures in debt. Yep. So, you know, when they're like giving you these amorphous like, oh, well, you know, it's worth it for connections or whatever. Ask them specifically, OK, but is it worth 100 grand? Like if I could go to law school in Arizona and get a full ride, is it so much better to go to USC and graduate with six figures in debt? Is it really that much better for this particular exact job that, that I'm talking to you about? And I have a feeling the person's going to say, 100 grand? No. Why does that matter? What? You got a JD at, uh, you have a JD, period. Like, yeah, okay, you, that's good. That's a feather in your cap for these public policy jobs. Hey, what do you think about this? You know, we always talk about saving money and uh, saving maybe 100 grand or whatever. <laughs> Imagine saving that 100 grand, but then turning around, you're not just saving it. You could now spend that money, right? Instead of spending it on the school. What if you went to a lower ranked school and you use just a small portion of that money to pay for someone to tutor you through law school so you can crush it and get A's? Yeah. Pay a little bit of that money, not anywhere close to 100,000. Pay someone to help you hustle, reach out to attorneys on LinkedIn. You can hire these virtual assistants these days. Hire a housekeeper for while you're in law school so that you get better grades. You can literally hire an in-house chef and still come out <laughs> way, way less in debt, right? And be like, totally relax. I mean, I'm not suggesting people do that. Yeah. You don't need to, but it's just like, think about the trade-off. You want to give some administrator this cash and say goodbye, or do you want to keep it and really make yeah. yourself a success in the school you go to? Yeah, or it's a down payment on a $500,000 house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just, it's so much money. It, I don't think people understand the scale of it. And so then they, they, they're willing to say, oh, these obscure benefits, you know, of like, Vague, well, but yeah, prestige undefined, and connections. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, okay, we're talking about $100,000 for your vague notions about prestige and connections and stuff. 
Uh, Hadari, my my hypothesis is that you just don't even need a JD, period. Like, you want to work in these public policy jobs? I'd go to work in public policy and then see what you need in order to promote yourself down those ranks. Maybe it's the master's in public policy, but you're already shitting on your own master's in public policy. You know, you're saying, oh, I think I'd learn more if I did a JD. Well, maybe one or the other, by the way. I, I, do you really need a joint degree program? I feel like if you get a JD and you're successful, then you're going to be able to work in public policy roles. It almost seems like joint degree programs were invented by schools as a way to just eke out one more year of school. Hell yeah. Four years of tuition instead of three. Absolutely. I think the JD trumps all other degrees. I can't imagine that you would actually need an MPP to go do some public policy role if you had a JD. They're like, oh, no, no, sorry. (laughs) You don't understand. And if they did, you'd okay, fine. I'll go do my one year master's program now. Yep. All right, Hadari. Hopefully that was some food for thought. Thank you for your thoughtful email. Yep. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening.